This is Lori's chart and Lori is a reflector. We actually had two, we have two reflectors who submitted charts, which is always awesome. I love that. Um, and so Lori, can you, um, unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes. Uh, I'm relatively new to human design and I have this open and undefined, I guess it's called the identity center. And, um, I'm 60 and sifting through a lot of deconditioning and wondering how I can decipher between my identity and that that's being taken on. Um, okay, great. Thanks, Lori. So yes, you do have an open identity center, the G center, which is the center for love and lovability, identity and direction. But you also are a reflector, which means you have an open chart in general. So it's not just that center. And the thing that I would say, I'm, I want to just use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit about my perspective regarding identity and regarding what the chart has to tell us about that. Because there's definitely strains in human design, uh, particularly in traditional human design, but not exclusively so, that will say that somehow this chart will tell you who you are. And you hear these phrases like, you know, who are you really? Who, you know, I want to know who I really am. And my perspective on that is, is that uh, human design is a snapshot of the day you were born and um, and the time you were born and 88 days prior, it's actually 88 degrees prior on the mandala, but 88 days prior. And so it gives you a sense of the energies to which you have ongoing, ready, reliable access to, which is your definition. And then the energies that you have a variable relationship to. So I call the definition your core energies and the openness, your variable energies. But let's remember that everyone has experienced, has the entire chart and everyone has experienced all the energies of the charts many, many different times throughout the course of their life. So it's not just that you only experience the parts that are colored in. Actually, you experience all of it. So for you, Lori, and for our other reflector, um, uh, who we'll get to in a minute, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but um, you are going to want to look at the um, gates that show up multiple times in your chart. Because generally speaking for reflectors, they're going to have... Uh, certain gates are going to be highlighted more than others um, it, because it's easier. What, what's the right way to say it? There are 26 different activations that come from 13 on the, the black side, um, which I think of as the conscious side and 13 on the right side, which I think of as the unconscious side. Sometimes it got called personality. Um, and uh, God, what's the other one? Sometimes it's mind and body. Anyway, there's lots of different ways that people describe it. Sometimes it's called life purpose and soul purpose, which I, frankly is a distinction that I don't really understand. So um, the point is, is that everybody has the same number of um, planets, right? That are showing up, but sometimes we have multiple planets in one gate. And whenever you have that, there's going to be more, it's going to be a major theme for you. So if you look, take a look here at Lori's chart, you can see Pluto is in the 40 twice and Neptune is in the 44 twice. Uh, and then we can also see that the, both the sun and Mercury are in the 48. Um, we also, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, I usually do this with a different piece of software, so um, I have to do this manually now. But those are the ones that I'm really seeing. And then obviously she's got the 44 here. We just mentioned that the 40. Yeah, we mentioned those. So she's going to want to look for um, the ones that are multiply defined in her chart. And actually for a reflector, she's got more definition in more different gates than I've seen on some other reflector charts. Because for some reflector charts, they end up with like four or five activations in one gate, which means, well, that is like a major, major theme for her. So 
Lori, in terms of you wanting to get a sense of yourself, right? Um, let me just stop this and, and talk for a second. In terms of you wanting to really get a sense of yourself, the thing about reflectors is that a lot of times people will look at that and in traditional human design, sometimes they'll be like, oh, you know, reflectors are so at the mercy of everybody around them because they're so open, they're going to pick up and amplify other people's energy, which is true. But reflectors have a, have a unique quality of being able to like I, I have a, a reflector colleague and the way she talks about it, is she says that you get to taste the energies that are around you without having to take them on so much. So for reflectors, or if you only have two defined centers, three defined centers, something like that, I highly recommend that you do like in terms of deconditioning, which is what you brought up, Lori, I highly encourage you to do energy practices. So the, I provide Kundalini yoga practices. Other people provide other things. I have a colleague who does essential oils, another one who does EFT, you know, there's different paths to help with your deconditioning, but doing energy practices can really really help you just in a non-cognitive way where you don't have to process a lot, you know, where you can just be lifting off um, imprints that are not serving you. So that's one thing that I would say. And then to see how you can kind of taste different energies. And the thing is, is like when it comes to identity, I, I'm not one of those people who thinks you have some kind of authentic identity that gets thrown around a lot um, that you have to uncover by taking away all of your conditioning. I'm not in that camp. <laughs> I believe that you actually create your identity. Okay. You have certain tendencies, you have certain interests, you have certain um, things that happened as part of your life experience, the family you were born into, the community you grew up in, the country you grew up in, you know, the, the sort of economic level, level of privilege that you might have. There are so many things that influence our sense of self. And we create our identities by being in a dynamic relationship with what's going on inside of us and what has, has happened to us in the course of our lives and the choices that we've made. So I just like to, to say, I, I don't feel like it's just a revealing process. And the reason I say this when it comes to human design is, for example, I have only one gate to find in the sensing circuit, but I have a highly attuned relationship deep, deep relationship with the energy of the sensing circuit, which I developed through my life experience, because I've always been really interested in dance, for example, movement, creativity, and so on. And I've spent a lot of time cultivating my relationship with those qualities of energy, but they're not defined in my chart. So that's my, my take on identity. Okay. And I know that it can be different from other people because there are a lot of human design people who really enjoy the idea of being able to tell you who you are. They do. And I just don't ascribe to that. Like what I like to say is I'm the expert on human design. You're the expert on you. Let's have a conversation. Right. So having said all of that, Lori, I would say to you, and it is what is your, like, like when you're like, one thing you can do is go and look at all those gates and see what do you feel like you relate to the most, right? You're like, oh, and then really kind of just feel into that. But then you've got the whole chart where you've probably built a relationship with the parts of the chart that are open also, just like I said, with my sensing circuit. So I know this might be frustrating. <laughs> You might be like, yeah, but I thought human design was going to tell me this thing, but it's really kind of a, a, it's almost like a treasure hunt where you're like leaning into both your own chart and your definition, your core energies, but then the system as a whole, and it takes time. I want to just say, I, I run into people a lot who give themselves energetic indigestion because they try to eat the entire chart all at once. And then they wonder why they get frustrated and upset. <laughs> so don't do that. Like give yourself some time, pick some things to focus on and just get to know them, right? 
get to know them a little bit better. So Lori, do you want to come on and talk to me for a minute? Um, or, uh, because I can, I think, I'm here. I think I can, yeah, there you are. Who didn't know I was going to be on video. Okay. Go ahead. Well, if you don't want to be, I'll take you off. I'm fine. You're fine. Okay. So having said this and you're new to human design, so I know you might be like, yeah, but there's so much for me to learn about it. And I get that. But how is this landing what I'm saying to you and about this piece about identity? And is this helpful? Yes, because one of my hesitancy, hesitancies with human design was I didn't want, I don't know, to, to be told who I am because I am who I am. Yes, <laughs> and exactly. so some of the reflector stuff resonates and other I'm like I don't know it will be revealed if it's supposed to be revealed exactly yeah yeah um yeah yeah I'm I'm just on a personal growth journey and there's a lot of sifting going through yeah right now. yeah and, and that's a beautiful thing that's great Lori so so what I would say is and I, I always say this to everyone is anything you hear from me or you read in a human design book or you watch in a video is just run it through your own inner wisdom. Just run it through your own system to be like, you know, like, cause there's things that pe that come out of traditional human design about my design that I completely do not resonate with. Right. And so you, and like even the thing about the sensing circuit, right. I mean, I, when even I talked to my mentor about that, she was like, oh my gosh, I always think of you as a very embodied and sensual creative person. I said, I am. She goes, you only have one gift. I'm like, I do. And she was like, wow. She was even a little stumped by that. Right. But this is the kind of thing where like over time, I've just come to, to get this point. So what I want to say to you is if you want to find out about the G center, go and explore the G center. And because it's very interesting, it's a very important center, not that any of them are unimportant. And there's a whole inside of the Becoming Sovereign uh, Retreat Center, there actually is a whole thing on, I, th I think it's in there. It's on my YouTube channel. If it's not in, in the Becoming Sovereign, it's a whole thing about the G Center. There's like eight videos that are all about the G Center and all the different channels that go through them and all the different gates. And so if you were like, I wanna do a study on the G Center, you could just go and focus on that for now, rather than trying to like, be like, oh my gosh, it's this whole thing. And there's so many gates. And what do I do with all that? Right. Just pick a, a, a thing to focus on. Cause what also happens a lot of times is when you pick something to focus on, it leads you to something else. Right. And that's allowing, cause, cause I imagine that you're probably a really sensitive person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you feel overwhelmed by other people's energy? Uh, not typically. Okay, great. So, so the, that whole Teflon thing, I, I mean, like, I don't, that's a part I'm like, I don't know that I absorb and need to dis, discharge and, you know, get all activated. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, you could play around with some of the energy practices that do that and then see how you feel. And if you're like, I don't feel any different. Okay. That's information. If you're like, wow, I feel really different. That's information right? So because it might be that your normal is so normal that you don't know what different would be. That may be very true. <laughs> it's generally the case for us, right? Yeah. So it might be worth just, just playing around with that to see, um, because, you know, you were asking about how do I, how do I like get, let go of what not, is not mine. I mean, that's, that's the, one of the best first steps. Okay. Is this helpful? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.